Hey, Mr. Alex David, how's it going? Thanks for being a patron and thanks for uh, filling things out and being willing to do the critique. I really like your work and you might see initially I have some of your work brought up here with some uh, red words over them. This is not uh, labeling uh, like in high school or whatever. Uh, this is just for me personally so that I can stay on track mentally because I'm usually doing these in one take and sort of just wanted to guide myself through a few things. Just to, don't, don't worry about the red letters, but there's a sort of a theme to each of them, right? Um, so I saw what you mentioned in your uh, responses is that mainly your, your, your end goal is sort of children's book illustrator, right? Um, and you're working on uh, getting a little bit more perspective, uh, at least, you know, what you're drawing from instead of sort of the straight on view and overall working on characters, right? And so there's a few things that stand out to me and I'll just say right off the top of my head or, or right off the, the bat rather, I think you're in a place where with just a little bit of uh, tweaks and uh, kind of pushing yourself in a few different directions a little bit further, uh, you're, you, you could definitely be getting work if you're not already, uh, doing some mascot design, right? Uh, which is a good place to be. You have a, a good understanding of expression and stuff in a way that, uh, most mascots kind of fall into some very broad, uh, camps expression wise. And so I think you're in a place where you could be getting there. So let's cover each of these little red text things and, and we'll move forward. The very first, this is my favorite piece of yours is this chicken. Um, it just, it has everything, right? It's a well-designed character. Uh, it's, it's, it just looks good, right? There's, there's not a ton more that can be said. Um, here's sort of the, the main thing here. The word under here is, is balanced, right? I just want you to take a look between the chicken, um, and this character you have on the left here. The, the difference that I see between these two is that for whatever reason, um, and this can be this can manifest itself in both size, but also in, in shape and, and movement and stuff. But you want to find balance in character design, no matter how exaggerated a thing might be, right? And so when you have something that is kind of overarching or moving in a certain direction, your best friend is going to be the S-curve uh, in something like your characters here. Even, I know you, you have a tendency to make some arm shapes that are simplified kind of in, in this way. Um, but I want you to try and see what you can do about, see how how this arm becomes a little bit uh, more visually appealing once it's balanced a little bit, even though I know it's that's not as simple, right? Uh, the same there with that leg uh, and kind of just bringing this foot forward a little bit more. I hope that makes sense. Um, I don't know if I've explained it fully so far, uh, but balance is just, a, it's an element of appeal and it's something that, that gets something across visually well. Um, and it's something that could be carried through some of your other characters, um, but I would, I would start there with, if you can't balance something in its movement, right, uh, it, with an S curve of any kind, uh, try to do so with size. Uh, and so that's that's kind of what's happening with this character that I like a lot about him is that okay you're you've got some broad arcing changes but you also have an increase in mass as the arm gets away uh, an increase in the hand size. Um, if I were to make any kind of changes here, let me try the uh, warp tool here is new in Procreate so it might not come across perfectly. Um, but just in this this sort of stance uh, instead of red penning, I'm gonna see what I can do. Um, yeah, something something a little bit more like that, right? Um, because it's almost like a uh, it's like telling a joke, right? Where you you introduce tension and then release it uh, with the punchline. It's a little bit like your when you start kind of an arc. It's almost like that you're waiting for the other shoe to drop, right? And so when something kind of starts at the body and goes out like this, it's like. But how are you going to bring it all back together? Um, so that's why I would kind of change that that arc a bit there. And overall in your work, just look to introduce balance, look to use S-curves, especially in limbs, um, because we have natural 
uh, curves to our, our human limbs, and a lot of creatures have that same thing too, where because in order to maintain locomotion and, and you know, basic stuff like that, we, we have a tendency toward um, like a, a call and response, a conversation when it comes to movement. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, another thing over here, and you kind of made this, you made it kind of clear for yourself by using, rendering this duck uh, both with lines and as kind of a digital painting, right? And so this is something I like to do, is just go in and, and crank the saturation down here. So you'll notice that because uh, you have lines on the character on the right, it's much easier to read. It's much easier to discern which elements go together, uh, which are different. And over here on the left, it's a little bit harder, right? There's, there's a few reasons for this. Um, and one of them is a sort of flatness to the shapes that you've made. Uh, which we'll talk about in the bottom character, your sort of mascot character there. Uh, but one of them is the the difference in uh, colors that intersect each other mean a lot more or, or have a, a lot bigger impact when there's no lines to stop them. Because a black line is is a stopgap. It's a, it's a bridge. It's a, a pause between ideas and between shapes, right? Um, but as soon as they start touching each other like this, there needs to be a bit more, and I'll try and kind of come up with a, a palette on the fly here, although uh, this usually should take a little bit more. Um, I would go maybe a little more saturated. And overall, in some of your work, this this might seem odd, um, but I noticed a, a kind of a lack of red, uh, a lack of warmth, and that's kind of a, a big deal. Obviously, you can you can mess with all kinds of different colors, and some of it might just be sort of taste and everything. Um, there's a, a bit of a red shift, and uh, to me at least, a red shift seems here to, to already uh, help your colors out a lot. And uh, some of this too isn't just going to be color choice, but it's going to be rendering differences, right? And at the moment, I do see a tendency with you to take the shapes that you've made and render them flat. Uh, for example, if we were going to draw a sphere here uh, and we wanted to render it like a sphere, um, lock that right here, we would kind of go in and maybe you have a light source like that, but you're also kind of gradually falling off, right, once the, the light hits it. Um, and maybe even, you know, going in with a, a darker shade and uh, kind of, you know, gradually creating that shadow behind it. And, and in that way, sort of every part of the sphere is being influenced by light in some way. And it's gradual and we're seeing, you know, there's no really big section that's that's all the same. Um, however, I do see a tendency with you uh, to take things and say, well, we want to make this sphere, but instead I'm just going to add this little rim, right, of shadow. Uh, and, you know, maybe up top we'll do a a light like that. The problem with that is that now looks like a coin, right? Because we just see a large empty flat space. We discern it to be flat. And so that's happening here, even though you're using a soft, uh, let's unlock that. Even though there's a soft transition between the rim and that big space, it's still a big space. Um, and it's happening here too, where maybe it's just a little bit, bit of an ambient occlusion pass uh, on this beak. Um, where you, you just have a little bit of a muted uh, dark color, and I, I would really break this down into 3D shapes a bit more, okay? So hopefully that makes some sense. Let me just kind of demonstrate there. Obviously, you would need to be able to break this object down into, into 3D, um, and that's kind of, that moves me on to sort of this next point here, the idea of being stuck. Uh, this character is stuck because they are right in between a style that's more of a, a traditional, say, Disney kind of moving in 3D space, two-dimensional character, um, and one that is completely flat, right? Like a Sanrio, like a, you know, a Hello Kitty type, very graphical character. Um, and the reason for that is you have all of sort of the trappings and characteristics of a character that's, that's moving in 3D and stuff, but you're kind of self-sabotaging with a couple of elements. Uh, and let me just kind of show you real quick what those are. So 
an initial sort of important thing is that I I don't see enough construction or enough enough uh, dimensionality to these things that they could be 3D, right? They feel just just straight up flat. When you have a character like this whose head is kind of rotating, you know, where he's if you did sort of a center line, it's it's pointing off a little bit in a three quarter view here. It's straight ahead here, down here. It's it's kind of looking down, right? Uh, here we're kind of almost a flat kind of, and we don't see the features changing enough, right? Something I like to do personally, and it's a sort of a matter of taste, is to build these 3D shapes and maybe overdevelop them on the back end on in my personal work, but then try and figure out what's the, you know, the economy of lines, right? What's the, the best way to convey that this thing has some form to it without actually needing to draw out, you know, all the little uh, lines that show, you know, what, what construction it has underneath it. And I think you're, you're almost there. I would, I would try and actually do that first, right? Where you're building the character out in 3d just as an exercise for yourself, um, before getting to this point, right? Because, or, or sort of picking a lane, right? With going more graphical and definitively 2d, um, almost like a, like a Hanna-Barbera cartoon is. That's almost where you're landing here, like a, a Huckleberry Finn. But, you know, that, that should be helpful and then distill it back to, to where you are. Um, a couple other things that, that make that the flatness come across is like when an arm here has this straight line. You see how the torso and the head and the arm all meeting together all have these intersecting lines? It... it first of all, reads flat, right? But it also makes you sort of wonder, like, how, what's the orientation? A, a, a line like that should be telling us that one object is in front of another. But sort of all four of these have been given uh, an equal depth or an equal priority. And so then that makes us think that everything is on the same plane and everything beyond being on the same plane is flat, right? Hopefully that makes sense. But then you have things like this, where you have a, a leg that's obviously moving in, in 3D space. So picking something there and, and moving with it. Um, when we get over to the 3D, the, the digital painting rather that you did here, the same sort of issues start to kind of come together again. Uh, the same from sort of the coin rendering of the duck up here, uh, the color choices, but also you see here like, this line is almost a continuation of the idea of, of segmenting these things off. And I would just do a little bit more, try to like, for this to succeed a bit more, you'd need those values to, to be more contrasting, right? So darker, when, when we talk about values, we're talking about a light value being one up here in, in these whites, a uh, dark value being down here in the, in the black. But when, uh, digital paintings are hovering too much in this sort of middle ground or they're they're just hovering in one spot with that without enough contrast that's generally gives us this muddy or gray or unfinished look right right here you have a little bit of a like you have a steam line do you am i no okay i, I added that um you have a steam line that is uh behind the arm here and so that just kind of you know make sure it's in front uh just for for clarity and everything. It, just get an overall orientation of things in space. Um, here is a hypothesis that I have because this is some of your storytelling work that I saw. And this is actually really nice. And from your sketches, I see a lot of like an, an understanding that these things are moving in 3D. I think what might be happening is that when you go to render and add a line layer, um, when you start to do like something that's painted, which I think time and practice is just all that you need with the digital painting stuff. Obviously, it's sort of a newer thing for you. So I don't expect you to be rendering, you know, perfect spheres and everything having this this awesome construction right off the bat. But I think what's happening is that maybe um, you're sort of interpreting lines uh, without necessarily remembering, if that makes sense, what each line is supposed to do, uh, or what purpose it's, purpose it's supposed to serve. With something like uh, your character here, it would be helpful to show that maybe this arm is 
intersecting there, right? Because in the, the pit, there's a sort of um, movement and, and folding of skin and stuff, but then leaving it bare right up here. And then uh, maybe the head does uh, sort of come down uh, from this side and come into the neck like that, right? And then maybe it does sort of start to overlap back on this side. And maybe because of all that, we actually do have a full occlusion of that that seam, and we do have a, 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 a complete line moving down the torso over top of that arm behind us. But because we've added these things, these are all sort of, there's we're getting that visual priority, right? I'm thinking that this is something that you would have had in your sketch, or just because it, it was unfinished, you didn't need to bridge all of those line gaps. And it's something that I see where you could very easily bring this sketch into a line art that is more aware and conscious of how things should actually be instead of just interpreting uh, almost as if you've been like given this sketch by someone else and said, okay, let me start adding lines. Um, just having a, a little bit more awareness of where things are sort of in 3D space and practicing the way that lines, what lines are, are trying to tell us, right? Because it does a lot for that, that sort of 3D effect. All right. I think I covered all three things in a way that hopefully is helpful. I know it was a lot, um, but like I said, I think you could be getting um, mascot client work uh, with just a, a little bit more sort of practice and stuff going in. Remember your S curves, be more bold and extreme in your color choices. Try uh, shifting red a bit, that was hidden, but this I think might is just a slightly better color choice, so don't be afraid to go a little warmer. And overall, just have an understanding better with with what lines are doing for you uh, and try to avoid making flat, coin-like shapes. All right, hopefully that is all good for you. Thank you so much, and looking forward to see what you do next. Hey Lambasaurus, how are you? Hope you're well. Uh, thank you for being a patron and being willing to do a critique and for submitting so much work uh, for your review. Um, I know, noticed uh, you mentioned you're an engineer. This is sort of a side thing for now. Uh, and there's a few things that you want to improve uh, art-wise. So I wanted to go through just a couple of tips, uh, a couple of things to keep an eye on. Uh, first of all, though, uh, let's talk... Uh, favorite stuff. Everybody likes talking about what they like. Uh, and in your case, uh, personally, I'm a sucker for, for octopuses. So this is a, you know, that was, there's already some personal bias involved. Um, but I really like this piece and I really like this robot here. Um, nice and clean, like really strong uh, build to each of the characters, good balance and everything. Um, really nice colors too. And yeah, I like these a lot. Uh, wanted to start with that. A couple of things uh, that I wanted to address um, from sort of the weakness side. Uh, one of them is textures because you mentioned that you like to use textures. Um, I think that they are used very well in the octopus piece here, right? Because you kind of look at it a little bit further back, you don't notice any textures, right? Uh, you zoom in, you definitely see the lines and the, the base colors. And then you get a little bit closer and you're like, okay, now I, I get that there's a bit of skin there. And even from farther back, there's sort of subconsciously you're, you're detecting a difference or some uh, sort of um, noise on the skin, right? Um, so th this is texture used well because the texture isn't uh, overshadowing the other amount of detail that there is, right? And I want to take you over to this piece here, which I completely understand is, is a little bit older, and so maybe there's some things that you've moved past. Um, but if you look here, aside from the sort of the black sky uh, is interfering a bit with the black line work. Um, uh, so we're looking at this middle piece right here. Um, so that's sort of an initial thing, but also the shapes that uh, that are making up our our character and everything, the main sort of body of everything, are very uh, simplistic shapes, right? Um, not a lot of detail and very flat, but then at the same time, you have a lot of texture work. Um, and basically, we're, you know, we're looking for, for balance in all things, a uh, little, little bit of Thanos going on. Um, 
So if you have a texture that's overshadowing the simple shape like that, it's it's kind of like an, an overcompensation with detail, um, and it, it's like a it's like a T-shirt that has uh, muscles printed on it, right? It's just like a, it's it's got that level of like I know this is supposed to look right in the within the shape, but the actual shape itself kind of isn't there. Um, a way to solve this sort of would be uh, either toning back, dialing back the textures a bit, or just giving me a little bit more as far as you know what what's happening with the shape here. Do, do we have sort of like a an extra raised uh, bump that these things are sort of coming to? Do we have a little bit of like a chip in the keratin, you know, if, if that's what that's made of, uh, that's coming through there? Um, and generally, of course, building each object in three dimensions is, is going to be the best help for you, not just adding more black line surface details, but actually holistically building these things to be uh, in 3D. Like, say here, maybe this, I'm not super sure about the shape or the ex extremity of it, but, you know, that that piece could be coming over there. Um, so, so stuff like that. Uh, texture work is not uh, a, a compensation for something that, um, especially when it's in 2D, that's, that's sort of the thing. Um, it, it looks laid over instead of being a part of it, right? Um, so if we move over here to this piece, this has a, a much better use of texture, and it's not because that there's less texture, but the, the texture is aware um, of, of the movement, right? We have like the swirls and stuff curving around, oops, let's get eraser. We have sort of the swirls curving around the torso here, right? And around the body, we, we get a good sense that uh, not just from uh, the shapes, like we have, you know, the dripping over here, but also something dripping over the side here. This is curving a bit there. Um, we get the sense without the texture that this is a three-dimensional drawing um, just from the line work, and then our texture work is supporting that, right? Um, so that's that's really nice. And of course, it it's the kind of thing where um, the swirly sort of soft, the, the cream um, texture is is aligning itself well with a sort of flowing um, blobby sort of character, right? That's 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 round and fluid and, and not necessarily like rigid, right? Um, just quickly, I know your faces is something that you're you're working on a bit here. I think if you didn't see the face, this this piece works really well. So carry over some of the same principles that brought you to build the torso the way that you did. Um, the arms kind of in that same way. Um, and as you're kind of studying faces, just um, make it so you've you've got a direction that your face is looking at, right? Um, I actually just recently did a faces video that I would definitely check out if I were you. Um, understand sort of where the sockets are, point the sockets in the direction that you want to go, um, put the nose in between there, and uh, just keep in mind that, you know, from overhead, that the face is kind of wrapping this way, right? If that was the, if this is the front of the head here, your eyes are wrapping around a skull. Um, there, it's not just a flat face, right? Um, so there's a lot of other stuff, resources I have available for faces, for, so we won't go uh, into a ton of detail there. Um, but then also, like here, we have some texture, uh, very where the wild things are, right? With this cross hatching. Um, but it's a little bit of self-sabotage only from the standpoint of we know that this is a cylindrically shaped uh, neck, right? We, we know that this is this is round. Um, and so the cross hatching that would would benefit us there is one that is aware that we're on a curved surface, right? Even if it's diagonal the same way, um, I'm not even curving enough, right? Uh, like kind of like that. If our cross hatching was was aware that this thing is is moving, um, because otherwise the way that it looks here, if we just have flat cross hatching, it's it's telling us um, that the what it's on top of is is flat basically, and uh, I, I would sort of avoid using this l amount of cross hatching unless it's a deliberate stylistic choice to to kind of go with that 
where the wild things are look um, because it's not a it's not a replacement right of of that that dimensionality um, but if if you were going to keep working on it just be a little bit more aware of that because it it's again adding detail does not um, benefit a, a weak foundation right um, same thing up here when all of a sudden we have a, a lot of detail in our hard surface models uh, with like the guns here um, but then and even within the character very uh, detailed uh, buttons and sort of the you know the fabric that's running down is is detailed but then we notice that the the body is a bit underdeveloped the the legs the amount of lines in the gun and the hands versus just this one leg right just just one line defining our, our leg there it's uh it's the kind of thing where if you're gonna have that big of a difference in the amount of detail that you're you're putting into something where you know it's really complicated in one area and then very simple in another um that's in broad terms that's actually kind of a good thing because it it draws your eye or draws the focus to an area and then gives visual rest in other areas but here sort of the 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 cynical person is going to be able to look at this and go i don't think he understands fully uh how to draw that leg right or or sort of what the gait of the character is or or if he even started with sort of a torso that was oriented in 3d space before building the rest of this out um, really nicely rendered elements of this piece that are just kind of being weakened by um, those underdeveloped areas right um, and, and it's again a case where adding extra detail isn't going to to solve that right um, so here it was it would just honestly if you're still interested or, or attached to this piece it's like I think it would be kind of a good exercise to go over this draw over it yourself and just tell yourself okay very basic terms sort of what's the 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 rectangular cube of the uh, shoulders and like upper part uh, this isn't this isn't perfect but building those things out for yourself building the torso in 3d and that'll give you some flat planes for the the front here like the chest coming down and that'll help you orient where it is where they're facing um, that'll help uh, like say this uh, bow tie to sort of come forward you're you're looking at uh, this bow uh, in front of this one right and so all, everything kind of starts to fall into place uh, when that initial stuff is built well, right? Um, and I know there's sort of, there's some areas you're going into that I don't have as a ton of experience with or anything kind of in the, the creepy, um, like, you know, the general, like a lot of the stuff that you're sending. Um, but even then, even when things are complicated like this, uh, it's, I think, still important to have a sense of appeal with it, right? Even something that's unknown. Um, and, yeah, so try to try to balance that out with the amount of detail that you add to it. Okay, um, hopefully those things were helpful and it made sense, and it's something that's actionable for you to move forward on. Um, again, some of your work that I really like and just a few things to, to kind of keep in mind. Um, also, color palette choice, I would try to to go a little bit more vibrant, right? Um, a little more saturated, uh, a little bit more of a, some things that I don't really notice looking at just these pieces here, right? Is some greens, some uh, some yellows and oranges. Uh, if, if I were to take this octopus here and maybe make like a, an overlay layer, I don't know if this is, don't know if it's gonna work. Um, yeah, see if I if I had some areas that were kind of coming across with a super vibrant orange, maybe this is a exaggeration, right? Um, but just a like that would make the orange of the octopus uh, pop out even more, and then you'd have the the muted blue and the muted uh, red, yellow, the gray all be places of visual rest, um, and that might be successful for you. 
And yeah, that, that's the kind of contrast in color that I'd, I'd love to see from you more. All right, thanks a lot, Lanosaurus, and looking forward to doing, seeing what you do next. I'm, I'm still working on that outro going as smoothly as I can. Take care.